Flynn Dog Science with me, Caleb Flynn. Subscribe, like, comment, and hit that bell. I've been thinking about gas laws and the non-stop Heron's Fountain. Welcome to Flim Dog Science. Today we're gonna check out if we can make a mini Heron's Fountain with these supplies right here. In the process, we'll learn about pressure and volume and gas laws and these relationships to see if we can make the Heron's Fountain run longer and if we can make it shoot a little bit more forcefully out the top. Let's get started. For any of the simulations we use, just check out the links down below in the description. You can also find some more videos that we've done and see about some other cool experiments. Let me show you our end goal product. Something kind of like this. You can also use fish tubing instead of your straws, and I've done that quite a bit in the past. The only downside is the water doesn't flow as well in fish tubing. Here's our two pieces now. Look at this. Couple changes. I didn't end up using any duct tape and I didn't end up putting a plate on here to rest this. I just glued it straight on. We'll see how that works. I also, instead of using a couple extra straws, look at this. I just put a little fish tubing on there and we'll see how that works. This piece will go right in here. We can tighten that up and we can see that our little straw here gives us some wiggle room. Let's try it out and see if it works. Here's how we fill it up. We're gonna put some water in the top, water in the center. The bottom one will stay empty. I'll put a little food coloring in the top once it's going so you can see how the water's flowing. The middle one's filled. Let's put a little in the top and see if it'll start. Look at that, you see that right there? These are so cool. So think about what's going on, why the fountain's running. Let me put a little food coloring in and we'll see how it moves through the fountain.
We see just a tiny bit's coming out the top now. It's almost done. Think about now, why is the fountain stopping? What changed that made the fountain stop running? Let's try it one more time. We'll do it with red food coloring. So we see the water at the top moves through the straw, fills the bottom. The water in the middle does not change color. That means nothing that's red is going into it. So the water from the middle is going up this center straw coming out the top of our fountain right up here. Now let's think about why the fountain runs in terms of pressure and volume. <laughs> the first thing to notice is that the fountain doesn't run when the top's not full. So why is that? The water at the top flows down through the straw, providing energy to push this water upwards against gravity. Let's watch the water flowing down through the straw. And as the water flows down through the straw, it fills the bottom compartment with uncompressible water. As the water level rises here, the volume of air decreases. And what's decreasing the volume of air due to the pressure? When we make the volume of our container smaller, the pressure goes up. Raises the pressure. So the pressure goes up, which means the air molecules are pushed upwards into our middle compartment. As the middle compartment has more air molecules pushed up into it, the air molecules push down on this water surface, and those air molecules are increasing the pressure of our middle compartment. So as the water is pushed upwards through the straw, we see the volume of air here increasing. And when the volume of air increases, what's that do to the pressure? Watch the connection between pressure and volume. If we make the volume of our container bigger, the pressure goes down. That decreases the pressure so that the pressures between these two containers can stay about even. Have you figured out what determines the height of the fountain at the top? The first thing to notice is there's no fountain when there's no water. That's a clue. When we add the water, the fountain begins flowing. And if we wanted the fountain to flow more forcefully out the top, what we need to do is increase the pressure in this container. So watch what happens if we squeeze the bottom container. You see it shoot the fountain out the top just a little more forcefully. So by increasing the pressure in this container, we can make the fountain flow a little more forcefully. Our main problem then becomes, how can we make the pressure in this container higher? Well, the first thing you could think about doing is how could you make the water fill this container faster? So my challenge to you is try to come up with a Heron's Fountain model that allows this container to fill very quickly. And the faster you can get this container to fill, the faster you should get your fountain to flow out the top. Now let's think about what does it take for the fountain to flow longer. I've made three different size Heron fountains so that maybe you can get some ideas on how to make a Heron's fountain that flows for a really long time. Let me show you those and then we'll compare how long they flow. First, we have our mini one. That's the one we've been working with. Second, we have a Powerade bottle Heron's fountain. Third, we have our giant Heron's fountain made out of huge apple juice containers. Who do you think's gonna win the long running Heron's fountain? You ready? I'm gonna start these two and then put a little water in here and we'll see who wins. Who's the winner? Our big guy. What we want to do in order to get a really long Heron's Fountain is have really big basins of water that can be emptied and that can catch that water. 
If you have those two things, you can make a heron's fountain that runs a really long time. One challenge for you that you could try is to make a giant heron's fountain that's not so tall by putting the bottles horizontal instead of stacked vertically. One thing that can help is having a small tube this is a small fish tube so that the water doesn't run very fast through your tubing. I hope this Heron's Fountain experiment has filled your happiness and curiosity bucket a little. I hope you've learned a little bit about pressure and volume because I've really enjoyed figuring it out with you. If you haven't yet, increase the pressure on your subscribe. We'll do some science again real soon. Slim Dog Science with me, Caleb Fleming. Subscribe, like, comment, hit that bell.